Father, we thank you for your people, happy people, faithful people, dutiful people, responsible people. I pray your people will not be here in vain. And I pray that your blessing will multiply in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Speak to every heart even now. And double, multiply your blessings in every life. That we may reach out in the strength of the Lord. And we will do good. My brothers will do good. My sisters will do good. All the workers, leaders will do good. Their lives will be profitable and rewardable in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Luke chapter 8. 8. Luke chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 35. In Luke chapter 8, verse 35, then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man. And as they found the man, out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, closed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. That's a man that encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. He met the Lord. The Lord touched his life. A change happened in his life, and the people came, and they saw that change. I'm talking tonight on the power of a changed life. The power of a changed life. When we come to Christ, and when we know Christ, and he knows us, and he touches us, and he transforms us, there is this power manifested by the Lord himself. And that change of life will not only be known to people, it will influence people. Your life will influence people. Verse 38, in verse 38, then now the man out of whom the devils were departed, besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. When God has done something for you, you will not close your mouth. He has saved you. He has healed you. He has delivered you. You will not close your mouth. You will not withhold what the people need to hear away from them. The man wanted to be under the shadow of Christ all the time, following after Christ all the time. He wanted to leave even his friends and his neighbors, just follow Christ. But Jesus said, return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. What Jesus did for him, it was God that did that. And he went his way and he published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Your life will make other people seek Jesus. Know Jesus. Find Jesus. And the Lord through your life will touch many people and make them come unto Christ in Jesus' name. They were waiting for him. The power of a changed life. Come to First Thessalonians. I'm reading from chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1. And I'm reading here from verse 5. When a life is changed, a life is converted, a life is saved, a life is brought unto the Lord. That life has power has influence, as a drawing power to bring other people to the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. 
For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us. When we are born again, we become what we were not before. We have been in darkness, and when we come to the Lord, we will not become children of light. We are powerless and impotent. When we come to the Lord, we are not powerful to do what we are not able to do before. When we come to Christ, a change takes place. And it says, ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. When we come to the Lord, the change that takes place in our lives makes other people to wake up and to say, I have been like this, and look at this man, we were together. Look at this man, we were companions in evil. Now a change has come, a transformation has come, and we become examples to all the people that knew us before. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your face your faith for salvation, your faith, your faith in Christ, your faith, your faith that brought transformation to your life, your faith to God's word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we urge unto you and how ye turned to God. The people actually could testify these people were going the way of evil. They were going the way of destruction. And we see their lives, they have turned. They changed. The things they used to do, they do them no more. And the places they used to go, they go there no more. We see them, their encouragement unto us. Their good influence on us. They have a powerful impact on us. They turned around. They're not the way they used to be. Ye have turned to God from idols to serve the living, the living and true God and to wait for his son. They were expecting the coming of the Lord. And people could see them. They were waiting for the coming of the Lord in the things they refused to do. In the societies they refused to join. In the things of the world, they don't want to put their hands into now. In the spiritual life, transparent life, they were living now. They lived every day as if Christ could come today. And because Christ could come any time, they acted and they lived and they behaved and they prayed and they walked. Everything they did showed they were waiting for a son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. That's how powerful, that's how influential the life of a real changed person is. Look at Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8, you must be asking yourself, has my life so changed that now my life is influencing other people? Has my life so changed that is lifting up other people, raising up other people, and what they see of my life is a positive influence and impact onto them. Look at Zechariah chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 23. Zechariah chapter 8 from verse 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass, that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you. Look at that impact. Look at that power. 
Look at that influence. Look at that impartation into the lives of other people. They have been looking at those people, their lives were different. They have been looking at those people, grace had come to their lives. They have been looking at those people, light was shining in their lives. And on their own, voluntarily, they, they will come to you and say, we will go with you. It says 10 people will come. All of a sudden, they are watching from here, they are watching from here. Somebody in the office is watching. Somebody in the house is watching. Somebody in the community is watching. And they see the distinction in the life of these people touched and transformed by the Lord until without even talking to each other, this one comes, that one comes, that one comes, and 10 people taking hold of this converted man of this changed man saying we will go with you what is your church what do you worship what are you hearing what makes you so different what makes your life plain and clear and transparent beautiful profitable and good we've seen it whatever you have got we we'll want to have and wherever your church is Maybe a low building, maybe a high building, maybe a great building, maybe a, a moderate building, wherever it is, we're not looking at the physical, we're looking at your life. And we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Your testimonies will spread. Your influence will spread until all the people will come and say, we've heard, we've heard. Are you not brother so-and-so? Yes, we've heard. Are you not sister so-and-so? We've heard. And we're going to go with you. Whatever God has done in your life, whatever God has done in your family, he will do in our families. You'll be a great influence. You'll be a mighty influence. You'll be a powerful influence in Jesus' name. The power of a changed life. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the prevailing influence within converted souls. When you are converted, there's something inside you that becomes a prevailing influence, a spreading influence that makes everything in your life desirable. You'll be a desirable brother, a desirable sister. And what you have will influence other people, wake up other people. They will want to have the same Christian experiences you have in Jesus' name. The prevailing influence within converted souls. Number two, the powerful impact of convinced sons. Those who become sons and daughters of God, and they have such conviction that the way they carry themselves and the way they live their lives and the way they speak uh, to people and the way they dress and the way they appear and the things they do, they're so convinced of who they are that that conviction in them brings a powerful impact on the people that know them and see them. The powerful impact of convinced sons. Point number three, the permanent inheritance the permanent inheritance you will inherit something something good something great something that will beautify your life the permanent inheritance of covenant saints the saints that make special covenant with God and they're very conscious of that covenant and they live and they carry themselves with the understanding of that covenant, the permanent inheritance of covenant saints. Number one, the prevailing influence within converted souls. We need to understand, what do I have on the inside of me? Now that I am converted, what do you have on the inside of you? Now that you're converted, and that thing or whatever is inside us, is it dormant or is it active? Does it have an influence on your thought? 
an influence on your life, an influence on your utterance, an influence in your behavior, the prevailing influence within converted souls. Look at John chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 20. John chapter 14, reading from verse 20. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you, the risen Christ in us. Would you tell me that Christ will be in us and not influence us? Christ will live in us and not influence us? Christ will dwell in us and not influence us? Do you, can you say that the Father, the Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, will live inside us and our lives remain the same? can be. Look at verse 20. And at that day, ye shall know, ye shall know, there will be a practical evidence, empirical, practical, that you will know that I, Christ, I am in the Father, and you, you are in me, and I in you. Look at verse 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Look at this, look at this. And I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. Look at verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he shall keep my words, and my Father will love him. Listen to this. And we, Christ and the Father, and we, God and Jesus, and we, God the Creator, and Jesus the Redeemer, and we will come unto him and make her our boat with him. How can God the Father live inside you? And God the Son live inside you? the power that created the whole earth live inside you and then you're just living you know a so-so life a downgraded life a life that has no excitement a life that has no volume a life that has no influence it cannot be it will not be look at verse 26 in verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost at whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things, and he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Father in me, say that. The Son in me. The Holy Ghost in me. Look at verse 17, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but she know him, the Holy Ghost, for he dwelleth with you, that's the Holy Ghost, and shall be somebody out there tell me in you, the Father in you, the Son in you. The Holy Ghost in you, you have power to do everything there is to be done. Courage is in you already. Power is in you already. And positive impact is upon you already in Jesus' name. Hey, look at look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, when somebody is walking about and the heart is in turmoil, the heart is in confusion, uh, there is no peace, there's commotion, there's storm uh, inside him. Uh, it's a confused man, it's a confused woman, and there is storm raging uh, in his heart. He cannot plan. 
You cannot look ahead. You cannot lay hand on something. You cannot do something. He's a torn man. He, the, the thing inside him is tearing him here and there. But we, it says, we have peace within us. Confusion is gone. Turmoil is gone. And all that thing that tears people apart, everything is gone. You have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Ghost, and you have peace in you. That's the prevailing influence in your life. You are calm. You are cool. You have foresight. You can think ahead. And when you are planning, there's nothing to jolt you, and there's nothing to confuse you. Confusion depart from every life in Jesus' name. I look at Second Corinthians. I'm reading from chapter nine, verse eight. Second Corinthians, chapter nine. I'm reading from verse eight. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having, always having, all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Look at that. That's grace, abiding grace. You have peace inside you. You have grace inside you. You see, there are people that intend to do something, but they'll say, you know, I have a good intention. I have a good plan. I imagine the project, but I don't have the grace to do it. I don't have the wherewithal to do it. Grace abides inside you. So, you have an influence, a prevailing influence. You have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Ghost, you have peace, you have grace, you must amount to something. Yeah. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 5. Here it tells us another scene inside us, a prevailing influence uh, you know people who intend to do this and to do this and what prevails in their heart is fear what prevails in their heart is uh, discouragement what prevails in them is depression you say well look at my condition i would have done well but depression fear discouragement distress will not allow me. There is nothing that can stop you. With God in you, with Christ in you, with the Holy Ghost in you, with peace in you, with the grace of God in you, the next thing now, love. There's love inside you. Abiding love. Look at this, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. When the Holy Ghost abides in you, it doesn't just stay there quiet, dormant, and it cannot die dead. No, it's active. And because it lives in you, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. The love for the church, for saints, is set abroad in your heart. And the love for sinners and the love for your neighbors is shared abroad in your life. You will do something good. And then, not only that we have love, we have faith. We have faith. We don't think of impossibilities. We don't think of, I cannot, but we always think, I can I said I'm thinking, I can. I said I'm believing, I can. I said I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It will strengthen you. The faith to live. When somebody is living uh, on the kind of brink, on the shadow, on the pre precipice of doubt, that he doubts himself. He doubts the society. He doubts his friends. He doubts the whole world. He doubts even members of his own family. He doubts from himself to God, 
doubts everyone, doubts everything. He wants to do something good. He wants to talk to somebody. He doubts the person he's talking to. He's walking along with somebody. He doubts the people he's relating with. That man, that woman can do nothing. But when the doubt is gone, my doubts are gone. I said, my doubts are gone. And somebody has got the Father, got the Son, got the Holy Ghost in him. And so this person, he has the peace of God, he has the grace of God, he has the love of God, and he has faith. I'm looking at you there, you will do something. Something practical. Something good. Something lifted up. As your amen is, so will your appointment be. Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Ah, no wonder. Paul, the apostle, nothing ever intimidated him. And nothing ever stopped him. Nothing will stop you. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth where? Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. When somebody has faith inside him, and whatever is outside, the face on the inside conquers all the trouble without. Your, your face will be greater than every storm around your life in Jesus' name. I have the Father in me. I have the Son in me. I have the Holy Ghost in me. I have the peace, the peace of God within. I have grace, the grace that is able to make me do all things. I am what I am by the grace of God. That's what Paul said. That's what you will say. And then we have the love of God in us and we have faith in us. Think about this. Think about this. We have the word in us. The word in us. And do you know that God created the whole world by the word? He spoke the word and the word was fulfilled. And that creative, mighty word lives on the inside of you. If you have ever thought of failure, cancel failure from your mouth. Cancel failure from your heart. You will not fail. Even the way I see your face, it's the face of a person that cannot fail. And the way I see you position yourself, the way you see, you know what? So even when somebody is sitting or standing, you can tell whether the fellow is going to be a failure or a success. The posture I see in front of me, I see the posture of a conqueror. The one that will prevail. And it is what is inside you. The prevailing influence within converted souls. The word abides in us. We're looking at First John chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 14. First John chapter 2 verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men and young women too, because ye are strong. Ye are strong. How? And the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one thank god you are an overcomer the word lives on the inside of you now you have the prevailing power and the prevailing influence within your converted souls but you know you can have a physician a doctor living in your rented apartment and you live in one section of the house and he lives on the on one section of the house and it's just there and you don't talk together you don't relate together 
and you are suffering but he's there in your house you could easily have gone to him and said doctor look at this look at this and you will say oh so you have that problem about tens of how many people healed of that kind of ailment that come to me in the hospital and i'm living here my landlord don't worry your problems are solved the same thing god the holy ghost jesus the word peace faith grace everything good living on the inside of you and you never communicate with the father the son and the holy ghost and when you do communicate you communicate as if you are talking to god far away oh god where are you i'm looking for you christ where are you i'm looking for you holy ghost i don't feel you where are you it's right there inside your heart all the doubts of the past they're cancelled in jesus name point number two now the powerful impact of convinced sons you see there are sons and daughters of god the problem is they're not convinced the child of a rich man the child of a professor the child of an educationist the child of a miracle worker the child of the one that cannot fail that is who you are but you must be convinced and you must carry yourself with the understanding of this conviction look at romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 14 romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You are a son of God, a child of God, a daughter of God. The Spirit of God will lead you. He will not leave you in darkness to be beating about the bush. I don't know what I'm to do. I don't know the career I'm to take up. I don't know who to marry. I don't know where to live. I don't know which church to stay in. I don't know. I don't know. Ignorance will be cancelled from your life. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage cancelled from your life. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are, tell me, the children of God. That's assurance. When the spirit says, how could you ever doubt I'm here inside you? I don't live in the heart of a sinner. You are a child of God. That's why I'm abiding in you. And because of that, you ought to have conviction. As a son, John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, you must know you must know somebody called you and said am i talking to so and so you say yes i'm here i'm the one you're talking to i heard that brother so and so is in your house actually he called me and said i'm visiting you you see there in your sitting room and you answer i don't know you didn't receive him you need to open the door to him. If you open the door to Jesus Christ, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come into him. And now he has come in. I said, he came in. 
if anybody asks you then is Jesus in your heart I didn't hear your answer yeah. is he fellowshipping with you yeah. is he your savior yeah. is he living on the inside of you yeah. you know if somebody has come to your house and then somebody asks you is so and so there you cannot say I don't know you open the door he came in you told him to sit down and he sat down you gave him a glass of water to drink is there you must have assurance but as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name but look at this somebody comes to your house you receive him you keep him in the sitting room you talk but you talk superficial things you don't really bring out your heart talk heart to heart although you received him and then eventually he wants to leave he says bye bye and you never open the door of your room in a chamber unto him why don't you if christ has come in why don't you take him to all the various chambers there and say lord now i surrender everything to you anything unclean here anything defiled there anything unworthy there anything not appropriate there take everything away your life and your house and your heart will become so clean unbelievably clean in jesus name because now you have received him into every chamber of your life and you're a convinced son of god no doubt in your heart in the day in the night you are a convinced son there'll be a great impact in your life i'm looking at john chapter one and i'm reading from verse 40. john chapter one we're reading from verse 40. one of the two which had john speak and followed him was andrew simon peter's brother he first findeth his own brother Simon and says unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him unto Jesus. And he brought him unto Jesus. Look up here. When something good happened to you, when you found something good, when you've seen something good, it will show on your face. It will show in your language. It will show in your communication. Somebody just got married last Saturday. And as he got married, and as she got married, and now she goes to the office on Monday, you can tell the people that see him, the people that see her, just looking at the face, something happened to you. Between last Friday and today, something happened to you. And she will not waste time to say, yes, I got somebody into my life. Tell me, I got married. Tell me, I found the most handsome man on the face of the earth and since last Saturday until this Monday, I don't know whether I'm in the world or I'm in another place. It's like I'm walking on the air. When you meet Jesus Christ, the bridegroom of your soul, when you meet Jesus Christ, the one that comes to bring supernatural blessing into your life, it will show. It will show in your steps. It will show on your face. It will show in your language. There will be an impact. And when you find a neighbor like Simon Peter, when you find a neighbor, a friend, a companion, you will tell them something happened unto me. You will tell I said, you will tell. And he brought him 
to Jesus, a convinced son. When you are a son, you are a daughter, and you are convinced of it, it will tell you're not believing on two sides of the coin. You'll not be, today I believe, and then tomorrow I don't know. You will know, and what you know will make a difference in your life in Jesus' name. John chapter 6, verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? If somebody is not convinced, you'll tell from that question. From the answer to that question, in verse 68, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, he called him Lord, he's your Lord, he's your master, he's the captain of your salvation. And you will never dodge his lordship in your life in Jesus' name. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. Thou hast the word of eternal life. If somebody is still searching for who will tell him the word of eternal life, you will know. He's here today. He's in another place tomorrow. He's searching. It's another place next week. Is searching, is going to another place. And that is where you find a Judas Iscariot. He'll be with Jesus today. And then in the night, he's with the Pharisees. He's communing with them. He doesn't know where he's going to have satisfaction. Would I have satisfaction in Christ? Would I have satisfaction in what the Pharisees and Sadducees are promising me? Is uh, here and there. But somebody who is sure, like I am sure. I said, like I am sure that Jesus is the Savior, is the Master and the Lord. He has the word of eternal life. You will not be roaming about in Jesus' name. You're not searching, you have found him already. You're not seeking, you have found him already. You are settled. Am I talking to somebody who is settled? And that settlement and stability and steadfastness in your life will be evident to everybody around you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 69. And we believe and are sure, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank God I am sure. I said, thank God I am sure that assurance will never leave your life in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Thessalonians again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 6. From verse 6, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. There was persecution, but it was sure. There was misrepresentation, but they were sure. There were trials, but they were sure. That's why you don't find the Thessalonian believers, you know, moving here, moving there. Much affliction, much persecution. Could this be the way? Or is there another way convinced sons have a powerful impact in their lives and in the lives of the people that contact them? Look at verse 7. So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia, and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God's word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. You know, if they were kind of reticent, ashamed, drawn back, saying, okay, if Christ is your Savior, why this affliction? If Christ is your Savior, why this persecution? If Christ is your Lord, 
Why is this a problem in your life? You know, there are people, they say, I cannot go out and tell another person. I cannot go out and witness to another person because they'll be asking me, if truly you are saved, if you are a child of God, I about this. If truly you are sure you are a child of God, I about this. It decreases the assurance. It makes them draw back. But the Tetonian believers, they said, we know Satan is not happy. That's why you have all this uh, commotion and all this conflict and all this uh, sin that has come. But even though he's not happy, will make him more sad. We're going to show that we have assurance as children of God. And we have confidence as children of God. And we have that sonship confirmed and convincing in our lives. Look at verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you. How that she turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And when the afflictions came, this is how you know those who are sure. They didn't go to the herbalist of the past. They didn't go to the occultic people of the past. They didn't say, all this affliction, all this problem, maybe Christ can do it. But he's so far away, we don't know where that Christ is. And those herbalists are still there. And those um, people that used to help us with their cultism, they're still there. They said, never. Somebody say, never. never. Somebody shout, never. never. If the spirit that traced up Jesus Christ dwell in you, he that traced up the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, it will quicken your mortal body. Whatever the affliction, whatever the sickness, whatever the disease, we say goodbye to darkness and we lock the door, we will not open that door again. We will not go back to them anymore in Jesus' name. We're convinced and we're sure that whatever it is will need to be done in our heart, in our spirit, in our body, in our family, in our profession. Christ is sufficient. He will do it. I say Christ is sufficient. He will do it in our lives in Jesus' name. And so you have convinced sons. Look at verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven. They were not waiting for the Antichrist. They had no business with the Antichrist. They were not waiting for the mark of the Antichrist. They were not visiting false prophets. They were not visiting false teachers. We know who we're waiting for. The very Son of God from heaven. He is coming. I said he is coming. And when he comes, all those questions you are asking, he will answer all the questions of your life. And it will take you to live with him in heaven in Jesus' name. And when he establishes his thousand year reign, the millennial reign, where are you? You'll be at his side. You will reign with him in Jesus' name. Great tribulation, you'll not pass through that. Antichrist Mark, you'll not be here at that time. You'll be with Christ. I will be with Christ. I will be with Christ. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us. Ah, I'm delivered. Which delivered us. I said, I am delivered. He delivered us from the wrath to come. When a son, a child, a daughter of God is convinced, you can tell from the life, for a time, 
there's somebody who wavered, who shifted, who doubted. But eventually, when he saw the evidence, look at his assurance. We're looking at John chapter 20. John chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 26. John chapter 20. Reading from verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were with him. And Thomas was them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. And he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. The doors were locked. And now to show that Christ, the risen Lord, did not need an open door before he can come in. He's risen. And because he's risen, although their doors were shut, he entered in. And he said, peace be unto you. That's enough to give assurance to any doubting heart. And I know there's no doubting heart again here today. You're sure about Jesus? Born of Virgin Mary, are you sure of that? He lived a perfect life, are you sure of that? He was betrayed, are you sure of that? He was crucified for you, are you sure of that? He died, and he bore your sins away, are you sure of that? And he rose the third day, are you sure of that? He appeared unto his disciples with many infallible proofs. Look at verse 27. Then said he unto Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, reach out see there thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28, was Thomas sure now? I say, was Thomas sure now? Or was he still saying, I don't know, I can't tell whether it's my Jesus, my master, my Lord. Was he sure? Verse 28, and Thomas answered and said unto him, everybody say it aloud. Say it like Thomas said it. Say it now for yourself. My Lord, my Lord. The assurance of a convinced son. My Lord and my God. Assurance came. Look at the blessing where Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen in the physical yet have believed I'm one of those people I am blessed and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the sight of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing he might have life through his name. That's the conviction we have that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God. We're coming to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. But we see Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. He died on the cross to take and to taste the death you should have died. And when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that death penalty is taken away from us, 
and it's laid on Christ because by the grace of God he has tasted death for every man for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing tell me in bringing tell me are you one of those sons he'll bring you to glory shame out of your life hopelessness out of your life degradation out of your life judgment out of your life in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. Christ is not ashamed to call me brother, to call you brother, to call you sister. Even before the Almighty God, he says, those are my brethren. Is not ashamed to claim you and to have you and to testify of you. He saves, he sanctifies, and he brings the sons unto glory. Thank God I'm a partaker of that glory. And look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Reading from verse 7, sons of God, assured, convinced, sons of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. If we endure justinian, if we endure correction, God dealeth with us as with sons, sons of God, daughters of God. For what son is he whom the father chastineth not? Verse 10. For they verily, for a few days, chastened us after their own pleasure. But he, for our own profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. His sons will be partakers of his holiness. Holiness. I am a son. If your daughter says so, say so. And it will confirm in your life in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 14. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves. According to your former law, to the former lost in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. You know who your father is. You know the nature of your father. And you know the character, characteristics and attributes of your father. And you are a convinced son. A convinced daughter because of that in all manner of conversation you are holy holiness will be the watchword and the mark of your life in Jesus name holiness at home holiness in the place of work holiness in your community holiness on your tongue holiness in your character that holiness will be visible in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. You know, there are people who are not sure they're sons of God. And when they are with us in Deeper Life Bible Church, they try to manage to project some kind of holiness. And then one day they say, because they're really not sure of their sonship. And they're not sure whether they want the fatherhood of God 
fully manifesting in their lives or not. And so they sneak out. And they're no more here. And now they live any life. And if you confront them, who oh, they say, I was uh, trying to be holy when I was there with you. But now I'm not, I'm not there anymore. I'm over here. And I can live anyhow now. Those who are convinced sons of God, they are the people. They know the fatherhood of God. And they know the lordship of Christ. And they know the comforting ministry and the partnering ministry of the Holy Ghost because of that conviction. Anywhere they are, they will live the holy life. You are convinced. I said you are convinced. And anywhere you are, you will live that holy life in Jesus' name. Be holy for I am holy point number three now the permanent inheritance of covenant saints covenant saints there are saints that know that the blood of the lamb has washed them has cleansed them has purged them because of that deliberately they make a covenant with the lord I belong to you, and I will never think of going out, forsaking you, and looking in any other direction. I make a covenant to abide, abiding saints. We're looking at Psalm 50, verse 5. Psalm 50, I'm reading from verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. That's God talking. Gather my saints together unto me. Gather them together unto me. Tell them, come. They will not say no. Tell them, abide. They will not say no. They have made covenant with me. And you can go and tell them, I want them. I need them. I have need of them. They will not say no. And those are the saints that God is going to gather into heaven at the appointed time. And thank God, you'll be there in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 33. We're looking at verse 3, Deuteronomy chapter 33, and we're reading from verse 3, the saints of God that gather unto him, and they're willing to do, they're eager to do, they're committed to doing the will of the Father. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 3, yea, he loved the people, all his saints, not sinners, all his saints, not secretly defiled people, all his saints are in thine hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. They never say no to anything God is saying because. They are saints that have made covenant with him. Look at verse 25. These saints, I pray you'll be a saint. At home, you'll be a saint. When other believers are not there, you'll be a saint. When sinners surround you, you'll be a saint. When there's temptation to do something wrong, you'll not do anything wrong, you'll be a saint. What happens to sage? Look at verse 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. From this point you are now, no matter how strong, no matter how courageous, no matter how bold, no matter how fearless, from this point where you are, you will increase. 
as thy day, so shall thy strength be. Verse 27, the eternal God is thy refuge. You have maximum security. The eternal God is thy refuge. Underneath you at the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. And shall say, destroy them. I'm hearing partially amen from that corner. Verse 29, happy art thou. Who is like unto thee? O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy hell. And who is the sword of thy excellency? Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. They say, I'll bring him down. It's a liar. I will destroy him. It's a boasting liar. Your enemies shall be found liars unto thee. He will not pass this way. He will not come this way. He will not make progress. They are liars. Say, my enemies are liars. You will find them liars in Jesus' name. They are sneaking and they are trying to find out information about you. And they are asking, you know, was he in the fellowship? Did he come to the workers' meeting? Did he come to your church? I just want to know. And if you say, I didn't see him. I heard he was sick. Ah, you heard he was sick? That sickness will kill him. A liar. I said a liar. All the negative things your enemies are thinking of you, you'll find them liars in Jesus' name. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Going higher. Going higher. I will see you up there. Your inheritance you will not miss. Psalm 85. Psalm 85. We're reading from verse 8. Psalm 85, verse 8. I will hear what the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people. Peace in your family. Peace in your heart. And to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. You will not turn to foolishness. You are saint, and the position of the saint you will keep in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. We're reading from verse 13 and verse 14. Daniel 7, verse 13. In Daniel 7, 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, that's my Lord and Savior, came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the ancient of days, that's God the Father, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. That's the Father, that's the Son. Now look at the saint in verse 18. But the saints of the Most High. Are they here tonight? The saints of the Most High. 
the saints that have made a covenant with the heavenly father the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever and the people of God shout amen Romans chapter 8 in Romans chapter 8 the inheritance of the covenant saints the inheritance of those saints who have made covenant with God Romans chapter 8 reading from verse 27 in Romans chapter 8 verse 27 and he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the might of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God the Holy Ghost is praying for you Jesus is praying for you and his prayer for every covenant saint will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Look at what that prayer will do. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Everything that has happened in your life up till this point will be for your good. All those things that happened in the life of Joseph, the ones he couldn't understand. And the ones that took him by surprise. And the ones that people will be asking, okay, if you're a child of God, a son of God, a saint of God, how could this happen to you? And he says, well, I don't know. But everything that happened to Joseph turned out to be for his good, to be for his promotion, and to be for his prosperity. And to be for the fulfillment of the dream that the heavenly father has given unto him every sin that happens in your life the lord has the power and the lord has the ability to make every sin turn to your progress it will be so in jesus name in my life that is what will happen i said in my own life that is what will happen and we know beyond any shadow of doubt that all things work together for good to them that love god and to them who are the called according to his purpose good things in your life yeah. expected great things in your life yeah. they will happen and if they have happened already, more will happen in Jesus' name. Verse 32. In verse 32, that's Romans chapter 8, verse 32. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also? Tell me freely give us all things i've been waiting for something like this to claim for my personal life he that spared not his own son i was waiting for you to say that <laughs> he that spared not his own son but delivered him for me delivered him all for me how shall he not with him also freely give me all things now you must say that with assurance also freely give me all things what I didn't see in your life yesterday, by the time I see you tomorrow, I will observe in your life. Good things. Great things. Mighty things. Great blessings in your life. Spiritual. Physical. Natural. Supernatural. 
Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with able to comprehend with what other saints possess you will possess what other saints comprehend you will comprehend what other saints enjoy I will enjoy may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of God now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us unto him the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end you got it it will happen in Jesus name first Thessalonians chapter 3 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Everything lacking in your faith, lacking in your possession, lacking in your experience, the Lord will supply. Yeah. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, when Peter said he was praying that God will direct his way to the Thessalonians, if eventually he got there and the Thessalonians themselves if they were not there one has gone to the farm one has gone to the market one has gone to the shop one has gone to uh, the office Th what he brought they will not have and the Lord make you to increase you will increase and abound you will abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, with all his saints, with all his saints when other saints go marching in you will not be left behind you will be with them when the saints go marching in what they go to possess what they go to inherit you will not miss it you will have your possession in jesus name and you will not be a saint for only a day, for only a week, for only a month. You'll be a saint of God all the rest of your life in Jesus' name. The Father abiding in you. The Son abiding in you. The Holy Ghost abiding in you. The peace of God abiding in you. Grace, greater grace, multiplied grace, abiding in you. The love of God abiding in you. Face the face of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, abiding in you. 
and also the word abiding in you will make you the saint you ought to be in Jesus name in the private you'll be a saint in the public you'll be a saint and the confidence a saint has and the assurance a saint has and the boldness a saint has and the courage a saint has that courage that boldness and that assurance you will have in Jesus name the inheritance of the saints will not miss your life first Peter chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 3 first Peter chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Look at this, to an inheritance, to an inheritance, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you reserved in heaven for me reserved in heaven for me who are kept by the power of God the power of God will keep you the presence of God will keep you the provision of God will keep you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time everything the lord has in mind is going to reveal to the old church and to the old saints will be revealed unto you from tonight you'll be a special soul converted soul a special son a convinced son a special sage a covenant sage and all that you have heard about tonight will do good in your life. You have a prevailing influence. You have a powerful impact. You have a permanent inheritance. I receive. I receive. I believe. You will experience it. You will enjoy it. Rise up and tell the Lord. Look at all the Lord has told us about the power of a changed life. The power of a changed life. Let him do that in your life. Do that in your spirit. Do that in your soul. And let every provision of Calvary meant for every converted soul, meant for every convinced son, meant for every covenant saint, let it do good in your life even tonight.